We're over here at the painting table now. As you can see, I've taken my burning pen and I've outlined the mane and the saddle and the blanket, the little indicated the horseshoe and the nails, and uh, go ahead and outlined his front forelock, a little on his mouth. One thing I've noticed in uh, looking on uh, the photographs on the forum and things is when uh, some burn their lines on here, they get a little carried away and they burn them way too heavy. Uh, just be careful of that. Really the purpose of these lines mostly is just to separate the areas so the paint doesn't crawl over. And just the smallest little burn line will do that like these down here. Okay, so what we're going to paint this horse, I thought we'd do an Appaloosa with a blanket, white blanket on the back. That'll be a pretty simple thing to paint, and uh, we're not going to be dealing with that many colors on the horse. So that's what we'll paint this horse here as, a black abbey. So, the first color I'm going to use is white, because I'm going to go, go ahead and paint the back socks on him before I paint the black over the top and also the, the blanket here. Find me a good brush here to use. already wet my horse, so the paint will go on pretty easy. I don't have to worry about being too, uh, too neat about this right at the moment because uh, I'm going to be painting over this some of the areas with black, which will certainly cover up the white paint. But we want to make sure we get all the areas where the socks are covered. This horse in that photograph has two white socks. Some have one, some have three, some have none, some have four. Boomer had four white socks, my horse. And they say that four white socks is not a good thing to have on a horse. I have no idea why. One white sock is best, they say. Two white socks is okay. And three white socks, you gotta start watching out. But see one with four white socks, you should stay away from them. But Boomer was a great horse, so I guess he disproved that theory. I think Judy's horse, she had a black appy with a white blanket, just about like this one here. Can't remember how many white socks she had. Wasn't very many, it might have been one. Okay, now up here on the nose, I'm going to go ahead and paint a strip down his nose. Again, I'm not worried about being too neat up here because, again, we're going to paint over it. Even up front here on the horse, they have a uh, bet when you're getting your Coggins test to see if they have, uh, I forget what the actual disease is, but each year a horse has to have a Coggins test. And on the Coggins papers, the vet describes the horse by his socks and other markings on the horse, and especially up here on the front. There's a strip. Well, first there's a star, which is just a point of color on the horse's forehead. 
Then there's a strip which runs down the middle of the head. And then there's a snip which comes up from the lip like that. Boomer had a strip and a snip. Judy's horse had a star, I believe. A strip and a snip. Okay, we got that done. Now we'll probably paint over these white areas later on because this white, white has a tendency to soak in and it's a real dead looking color. So we got our white on there. Still got to do the blanket. Now you notice I'm just painting right over my band-aid here. It'll be the color of a band-aid, which is sort of a flesh color. See how that white just soaks in there? It's just kind of a dead color when it's put on uh, bare wood. Just a little and down his leg right there. So I'll continue painting this and invite you back in a little bit because I'll have to double coat it to get a good white finish on there. I got my white on there, I double coated it, squeezed me out some black here, so now we're going to lay in this black. And what we're after here, aside from a good solid coating of black, is uh, we want to get all these little variations of black that come up over the top of the white and our spots. So as you bring your black up to the white, make sure you've got your good solid paint and not thin paint, because thin paint, the white will come back through and it won't look good. But what I'm doing, I'm not concerned about that right now. What I'm doing right now is I'm just painting the areas up to those other areas. And I'll come back once they're dry the black is dry and uh, bring the black down into the white. So it's a good strong color. And another thing I'm not going to try to do is try to approximate those markings on that picture there exactly on my horse because that would just make the job too difficult. It's just it's good enough just to be free with them.
bring this black right up his rear end there. Like that. So I'll go ahead and continue painting him black and once I get it pretty well blocked in I'll bring you back and then we'll do the the detail work of bringing that black up into the white, okay? I've got all the black areas blocked in now on both sides and uh, the paint is starting to dry pretty well but before it dries completely I want to go ahead and do this area up front on his nostril. Now you can't see it here very well but right there there's a little pinkish color showing through. It shows up on these horses. See how the coloration is up here? Now it's kind of a grayish, pinkish gray and then it goes up into the color. And that's what we want to do here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of paint these areas here and you can see see how my paint is getting gray there? That's exactly what I want. See how I'm blending it here? I'm trying to stay away from that nostril. Now put some black on there and bring the black back down into the gray. See, now, now we've uh, going from uh, white into black, now we're going from black back into white. I'll just go ahead and blacken these areas back up again. Same over here. That's good. Now, to get that pinkish color, I'm going to use this red iron oxide. And it's not going to take but just the smallest dab of it. And I'll just put it right there. And blend it in with these other colors. There, that's just about what I want right there. Maybe a little softer right there. That looks good. Now I went over my nostril there just a bit. So let me correct that. good. If you're wondering why I haven't painted the tail, that's my handle. I don't have anything to hold on to. That 
being as it's going to be all black, I can easily do that there. Okay. And your brush it has a good point on it. Now we're going to bring these uh, black areas up into the white. I see they're just there's really hardly any pattern to them. They just go everywhere. So we can be pretty free with it. Just touch a point. I got water in my brush. And Sort of point it and then smash my brush down. Just looking for uneven lines, that's all we're looking for. But we want them to be nice and nice and crisp. Just like that. Now down here on the feet, where the black goes into the socks, it's not, it's not as, uh, broken up there, so, yeah, these areas are pretty easy to do. You just want a nice, solid break between the black and the white. No fuzzy looking areas. So I'll go ahead and paint this side and then we'll come back and do the spots. Now to do the spots, the secret is to get your paint real thick on the end of your brush and just dab it on there. Like that. don't have enough paint on your brush that's where you get a ragged edge and don't uh, don't get carried away you know you can it's easy to get carried away and you start sticking sp spots all over the place but you don't you know you don't need to do that that's enough for that side right there maybe just a couple up here that looks good. Maybe just step right in here to break that up. See, I'm starting to get carried away. I just can't control myself. All right, now we'll go back over here and do this side. There, see, I got a ragged edge there. So I'm going to try to get rid of it. I'm 
I said they're going to get rid of it, then I got another one right above it. What I'm trying to do now is break up that line right there, and I don't care for it. And that does it pretty well, I think. Yep, I like that. Now, along with white spots or black spots, there's also you can also do white spots, and I'll show. And that they add a lot of interest to your carving, and I'll show you how to do that. Get your small brush and just a little bit of white paint, and really thin it out to where you hardly even see it, and then just draw you little circles. Like that. There. They look especially good up here. Let me wash my finger there. On the horse's jaw. Just, uh, just give it a little extra pizzazz, and that's what we're after. I want to make this thing look so neat that that horse person walking by your display is going to see it, and he's going to say, "Boy, I just got to have that." show up but they're there and that what's look and that's what makes your horse really look snappy okay so now I'm going to stop right there let's talk about the hooves for a minute now on a horse if there are, if a horse has stockings or has no stockings the hoofs on the legs with stockings are going to be a light color in this instance, they're tan with some uh, darker lines through them. Up front here, they will be a gray, a dark gray, with some black lines running through them. Okay? So just remember that. Don't paint, don't paint black hooves on a white stocking horse. And don't paint light colored hooves, tannish hooves, on a non stocking horse. So we'll do the gray first, being as we got black and white out here. Just getting a little black there and some white. And I'll go ahead and paint this it's lighter gray color and invite you back to see how to make those stripes. We've got the hooves painted gray, and while they're still wet, I've got some darker gray here. And I'm just going to start up here at the coronet band and paint straight down in line with how the hoof goes, just like that. See? Just like that. Kind of mash your brush down as you go toward the bottom to make your stroke thicker. And I 
that's all we need to do there. So now on the back hose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use raw sienna. And we'll have to double coat this because, uh, as you can see, that white is coming back through. And once I get these painted and double coated, I'll bring you back again and we'll do the stripes. I've got the hooves double coated, so now to make the darker color, I'm just going to take a little black. and do the same thing that I did up front. Oops, not like that one. I don't care for that one. I have to come back and correct this one back here. It doesn't go with it. Uh, it should actually come straighter down. back and fix that later. You get the idea there though, I think. Okay, now, next thing is the saddle, I guess. But I'm going to take a break before I do that. Now we'll come back and paint the horseshoes, indicate the horseshoes on here. Back here underneath the back hoof that's raised, I just kind of mixed a little black and painted it in there because that area in there is going to be all chock full of dirt and stuff because that's just the way things are when you have a horse. Got to pick those feet every once in a while, and evidently they haven't picked his yet. So, okay, we'll be back in just a minute, and we'll start on this saddle. Well, I went ahead and painted a tail because I'm going to have to wait and do another video to go on to the saddle because uh, it'd just be too long and otherwise. So, this is where we are right now. We've got our horse body fairly well finished. There's still some uh, final touches to it that we'll do later on. Uh, as you can see, let me set him aside here. I went ahead and I painted my gate, and I did that. Also, I painted the hinges. I put some gun blowing on the hinges and the little catch up here to darken the tin. 
And then I came back and I brushed on some uh, red iron oxide to indicate rust. You can see the rust dripping down over time from the hinges and the anywhere there is metal. Just makes it look good. I always put white on the very tip tops of the poles because birds come along and sit there and crap. And the sun beats down on that area so that's the part that generally uh, gets white or bleaches out first. I uh, distressed my gate with some brown and then I uh, coated everything with the coat of polyurethane which deepened the poles. They're still not glued in place which deepened the poles so it looks pretty pretty snazzy I think. So when we put the horse on there you know it's, it's going to be a nice little scene a very appealing scene which is exactly what we're after because this is something that's going to sell real quick. Believe me, horses don't hang around long. I started on my sign. Like I said, it's going to be the Hard Luck Horse Ranch. I still have to do the lettering for the saying in here. And I might add a couple little more signs to it just to you know create interest. But as you can see, it's going to be a real spiffy little, little display there. Okay, so... Uh, in the next video, we'll start on the saddle, get that painted, and uh, depending on how long that takes, we'll start putting the final touches on this pony, and uh, hopefully it won't be too much longer that this, this series will be over. So until next time, I'll talk to you later.